Okay, here we go. In this video, we're going to use a two-channel oscilloscope. We're going to measure voltage and current at the same time. We have a basic circuit, 120 volts RMS, and a 60-watt purely resistive incandescent light bulb load. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to grab an oscilloscope, okay, bring it into the circuit. We're going to connect channel A across the lamp. We're going to measure voltage on channel A and we're going to measure current on channel B. If you look down on the right, you'll see a little symbol for current clamp. I'm going to click on that clamp. I'm going to bring it into our circuit. Okay. Now what the current clamp does is it provides us with the voltage signal that is proportional to the current flow through the clamp, the conductor that it's measuring. Uh, usually they have a scaling button. A current clamp does not have a display or a control uh, function. You plug it into a multimeter or an oscilloscope. I'm going to double click on this. I want to change the ratio of voltage to current to an even number. Okay. And scroll down one. And if now I have it set to one millivolt per milliamp. That's a scale of one to one. So the value that I see in the screen, I don't have to do any conversion in my head or I'm calculation it can just be straight uh, straight calculation or display now I'm going to take this wire right here from the probe I'm going to attach it to channel B plus I'm going to change the color of it so I can identify the trace easy I made it green okay um, I'm going to take the negative from channel B and connect it to the same lead negative lead of channel A my common point now we can set it up so we go ahead and click run we're going to open up the scope. And we know that we've got a 120 volt source, which has a peak of around 170. That's 120 times the square root of two. So we need to increase the voltage scale on these divisions. Right now it's just five. I'm going to take it up, up to 100. I'm going to change the time base. So about five milliseconds, just widen it out a little bit. We're going to reverse the colors. And you're going to notice a little green trace is kind of drifting around the zero line. That's our current. We're measuring current with this probe right here. All right. So uh, we need to change the scale on that. It's set to five volts per division. Now, typically in an AC circuit, the current value is going to be much less than the voltage. So I'm going to take that down to one volt per division. Okay, so if we look at that, our red traces are voltage, our green traces are current, but the, we're using two different scales. The scale for the current is one volt per division, the scale for the voltage is 100 volts per division. And you always have to keep in mind, you're looking at peak, a peak waveform when you're looking at an oscilloscope. All right, so if you look at that current, it's over half of one division. All right, so um, your peak value is up over half. So your RMS value is going to be less than that when you calculate it back. So the meter will actually read a uh, an RMS value. So I'm going to click run. I have a meter, a multimeter in here. And it's going to update. It's going to 500 milliamps. So it's half an amp. And that makes sense. We have a 60 watt bulb. 120 volts RMS, okay? Now, this note that I have on the left here, resistive load, voltage, and current in phase. If you look at full waveform, and you start here, you can see that they start, they both start at the same time, and they both peak at the same time. So the current and the voltage peak at the same time. Okay, so after 90 degrees, top of that waveform peaks, and when it goes negative, same thing, they both, the negative peak of the voltage and current are equal. Okay, so keep that in mind. All right, I'm gonna close these, and then I'm gonna pan down to another couple of circuits that we have. I have two circuits, one of them is an inductive load circuit, so purely inductive load. In an inductive load circuit, the current lags the voltage. Okay, 
the circuit below that is a purely capacitive circuit. In a capacitive circuit, the current leads the voltage. The current wants to rush into the capacitor. It's like a short circuit, and the voltage has to catch up. Okay, so what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to go ahead and run these circuits, and we're going to look at the oscilloscope. And identify which one is which. Well, we know. I, I clicked on the inductive load circuit. If you look at that circuit, and if time, if you take take my mouse, time travels across the screen. I'm going to hit voltage first, then current later. Voltage first, then current later. And the peak of the current legs behind the peak of the voltage. The peak of the voltage is right here. The peak of the current is here. So that's an inductive circuit. Current legs. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to open up the capacitive circuit. And as you can see, the current in the capacitive circuit leads. So tra time travels across the screen, hits the current, and then hits the voltage later. So the peak of the current is right here. Peak of the voltage follows afterwards. So it lags. If you bring them both up, you can compare them. Okay. And you can see the difference between the two. Now this is important because when you when you bring equipment into plants and you set up equipment motors and generators and transformers inductive and capacitive loads you, you affect the power factor so you affect the relationship between the current and voltage and uh, you can affect it so much that the uh, utility companies uh, will charge you they will, uh, they will they will levy you they will levy you a fine um, because they're providing you more power than what you actually need because you're not using it efficiently and you're disturbing the, the power factor okay but you can correct it uh, using power factor correction equipment so that's where we use oscilloscopes where we can measure the current and voltage phase relationship and then uh, devise a means for correcting it okay so next video four channel scope three phase circuit we'll catch up then